Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about the types of the Reed Sternberg cell in this video. In my previous video, I have already discussed about the pathogenesis of the Hodgkin's disease, and in that we have discussed it that the tumor cell in the Hodgkin's lymphoma is the Reed Sternberg cell. Now in this video, we will be discussing what are the different variants of the Reed Sternberg cell and in which type of the Hodgkin's uh, lymphomas we will be finding this Reed Sternberg cell. So uh, I have already told that the Reed Sternberg cell which is the neoplastic cell in the Hodgkin lymphoma it is derived from crippled germinal center B cells. This already I have explained but just to have a brief about it again. Uh, so B cell it has a antibody on its surface which is also called as a B cell receptor. Once this uh, B cell it is activated uh, when it comes in contact with the antigen so it undergoes the somatic hypermutation and also Ig class switching. So because of this what happens the type of the antibody it is expressing there will be change in the type of the antibody so that the new antibody will be able to recognize the foreign antigen very easily. Now because of this hypermutation we have a different type of the antibody expression that is called as Ig class switching. Now this occurs because of mutations if the favorable mutations occur then the antibody produced is it has a uh, very high affinity B cell receptor or the antibody produced can identify the antigen. Now these B cells which have this high affinity B cell receptors can either differentiate into memory B cell or they can differentiate into the plasma cells which produce lots of antibodies. Now if this mutation is not favorable, unfavorable mutations then these B cells will be expressing antibodies which are of no use we are called they are called as low affinity b cell receptors either they don't express the antibodies at all or they express the antibodies which are of no use so these such sort of the cells they are called as crippled germinal center b cells they undergo apoptosis now if this cell is infected by the epstein barr virus then we have the activation of the nuclear factor k beta which prevents the apoptosis and with further mutations this cell will transform into the reed sternberg cell now we'll see the morphology of the reed this reed sternberg cell which is the tumor cell it has uh, been described by the two physicians the morphology of the reed sternberg cell was described by the two physicians namely Dorothy Reed Mendenhall and Carl Sternberg. Now the Dorothy Reed Mendenhall, she was, uh, she is the person, she is a pediatric physician from the John Hopkins School of the Medicine. She was the first female to do the medicine from the John Hopkins School of the Medicine. Now both this uh, Dorothy Reed Mendenhall and Carl Sternberg, they used to do the study on the tuberculous patients and even the Carl Sternberg he used to do the study on the tuberculous and leukemia patients also. So both these uh, physicians, they used to study the lymph nodes and they found that few patients who had the lymphadenopathy, the histopathology of them were showing some different cells. Along with uh, the mixed population of the cells, there were some large cells and these people have described that cells uh, as a tumor cell. In 1901, Dorothy Reed Mendenhall has given the description of the Reed Sternberg cell. So, in respect to them, the cell was named after their name uh, as Reed Sternberg cell. cell. So, this is how it appears. This is a classical Reed Sternberg cell. It has a size of about 20 to 60 microns. And uh, typically, when you see, we, you see a very prominent nucleoli to them and uh, the classical one has a bilobed nuclei. It has two lobes and each lobe it appeared as a mirror image of each other. Both looks very similar. So they appear as a mirror images and uh, in the nucleus you have prominent isnophilic nucleolus. Now this appearance is similar to the oval eye nucleoli. See here the oval, uh, how does this oval face look like? This nucleoli they resemble the owl eye nucleoli and the nuclei it will have a thicker nuclear membrane okay and the cytoplasm you have variable amount uh, it can be moderate or abundant and is no to amphophilic cytoplasm so this is the classical reed sternberg cell which has the owl eye nucleoli prominent is no nucleoli with the mirror with the two uh, nuclear lobes which are mirror images of each other
when we see the immunohistochemistry of the reed sternberg cell classic rs cells and the other variants of the rs cells they exhibit uh, cd15 and cd30 markers so when we do the immunohistochemistry these cells are strongly positive for cd15 and cd30 but they are negative for cd25 and cd20 and cd45 now these cd20 and 45 are normally expressed by all the b cells but these rs cells they don't express this they only express cd15 and cd30 and in the variants of the RS cells, one of the variant which is the lymphohistiocytic variant that is uh, specifically CD20 positive and it is negative for CD15 and 30. Now if you remember in the classification of the Hodgkin's lymphoma, I told you that it has been classified into classic Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma and another one was nodular lymphocyte predominant. So this classification was based on immunophenotype of the RS cells. All the variants which were there in the uh, in the classical type of the Hodgkin's lymphomas, uh, all the RS cells they exhibit CD15 and CD30. Whereas the lymphocyte predominant type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma, which has lymphohistiocytic variant, it expresses CD20. But the CD15-30, which is expressed by the normal RS cells, will come out to be negative. Now along with this, some of the cells, they have even the Epstein-Barr virus RNA. Now this suggests the possible role of the EBV in the development of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now the variants of the RS cells are the mononuclear RS cell variant, lacunar variant, lymphohistiocytic variant, pleomorphic and anaplastic variant and mummified cell variant. Now we'll see each one of it now. The mononuclear uh, RSL, now as the name itself is suggesting, mononuclear. So it has a single nuclei and this is characterized by the large size, ovoid shape and indistinct cell borders. You cannot make out the, I have drawn it, uh, the border, but usually you don't find the cell. See here, this is the cell. You, you cannot make out the cell border. You can make out the nuclear border, but not the cell border. So it has indistinct cell border, it is large size and ovoid shape. And when you see the nucleus, you have a single vesicular nucleus with a parachromatin clearing. Single vesicular nucleus means the nucleus appears as if it is empty. This is because the chromatin material, it gets adhered to the nuclear membrane and nuclear membrane appears to be more prominent and the entire nucleus, it appears as if it is empty. And in this uh, vesicular nucleus, you see the prominent isnophilic nucleoli, uh, which is of quite larger size. See here, this is a nucleoli and this is the nuclei. And cytoplasm is moderate amount. And this type of the cell we see classically in the classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. This is the mononuclear type. So as the name suggests, it has a single nuclei only. Now coming to the another one, that is the lacunar variant of the RS cell. Lacunar means empty looking. So here uh, the entire cell, it appears as if it is having an empty cytoplasm and in that we are seeing the nuclei. So because of this appearance, the name is given as lacunar. The nuclei in this, it can be single or it can be multilobated nuclei and you have a prominent nucleoli. But these nucleoli will be somewhat smaller when compared to the mononuclear variant. And as I told you, the cytoplasm will be abundant, pale and clear. This is because of the fixation artifact. When the tissue is fixed in the formalin, the cytoplasm collapses. And when the cytoplasm collapses, uh, it retracts and uh, a clear space appears in between the retracted cytoplasm and the cell margin. You have a cytoplasm here, retracted cytoplasm and this is cell margin. So the clear space appears. This is because of the fixation artifact. So this gives the appearance as if nucleus is sitting in a clear space or the lacuna. That's why it's called as lacunar variant of the RS cell. And typically we see this one in the nodular sclerosis type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. The next type is lymphohistiocytic variant, which is also called as a popcorn cell. Now here, the name popcorn cell variant is given depending upon the appearance of the nuclei. If you see the nuclei here, it is lobulated and it appears as if it is like a popcorn kernel. So you have a multilobated nucleus which, simul which simulates the popcorn 
uh, kernel in this another important thing is the nucleoli which we see here uh, in the normal rs cells we have a very prominent uh, isnophilic nucleoli but here the nucleoli will be inconspicuous or it will be small and punctate nucleoli cytoplasm it will be moderate to abundant cytoplasm and the ihc expression is very particular in this cell as i told you this cells express cd20 marker and these cells are negative for cd15 and 30 and this type is uh, lymphohistocytic variant or popcorn cell variant is characteristic feature in the lymphocyte predominant type of the hodgkin's lymphoma Now next one is the pleomorphic or the anaplastic variant so as the name suggests cell itself appears more pleomorphic so it has uh, the nuclei which has a coarse chromatin and uh, it will have a very prominent nucleoli sometimes you can have the cell having the hyperchromatic nuclei it can have a single nuclei which is hyperchromatic with prominent isnophilic nucleoli or it can be multilobated also uh, which will have a coarse chromatin but it will have the prominent nucleoli and this we typically see in the lymphocyte depleted type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma next one is the mummified cell variant now this is a degenerated or apoptotic RS cell that may occur singly or in the cluster see this one this is the cell which is undergoing the apoptosis if you remember the apoptosis any cell which is undergoing the apoptosis it will have dark pink isnophilic cytoplasm with darkly staining pycnotic nucleolus so nucleus similarly we have this type of the cell which is having abundant isnophilic cytoplasm a uh, very dark pink cytoplasm we are having uh, so these cells uh, they have dense pycnotic nucleus you have a dense pycnotic nucleus that may sometimes have nucleolus or may not have the nucleolus but typical feature is very much isnophilic cytoplasm it has now this doesn't uh, specify a specific type of the lymphomas but if it is present in the when you are studying about the lymph node the histology and you see such sort of the cell it indicates that it can be the hodgkin's lymphoma but it is not specific for any type of the hodgkin's lymphoma so that was about the variants when you see the summary we have this is the classic RS cell which resembles the overlay appearance with the prominent nucleoli, bilobed nucleus, which are mirror images. And then you have mononuclear RS cell which has a single nuclei seen in the classic Hodgkin's lacunar, where you have uh, the nucleus which is which appears as if it is present in the lacuna. And this is uh, the characteristic of nodular sclerosis and the lymphocyte histocytic variant, which is also called as a popcorn cell this one has a nucleus which resembles the popcorn kernels with inconspicuous nucleoli and this we see in the lymphocyte predominant type and pleomorphic or dinoplastic variant we see in the uh, lymphocyte depleted type remember that lymphocyte depleted has a poor prognosis so we have the pleomorphic cells in them so pleomorphic anaplastic we see in the lymphocyte depleted type which has a poor prognosis mummified cell variant you have uh, the cell which is having dark isnophilic staining uh, cytoplasm with the pycnotic densely uh, stained chromatin uh, the nucleus nucleolus may be present or may not be present so these are the five types of uh, the variants of the rs cells in the remaining type uh, variants of the hodgkin's lymphoma we will we can see the classic type but if we see typically of uh, these cell types then that indicates that this is a variant which variant of the Hodgkin's lymphoma it gives a clue for that so that finishes about the types of Hodgkin cells in the next video I will be discussing about the uh, variants of the Hodgkin's lymphoma or subtypes of the Hodgkin's lymphoma thank you friends